This video is about the outputs of the FX6, both for external recording devices and for monitoring screens, EVFs or wireless. Because this camera contains some difficulties and also a bug that you should know about. Let's start right away with the bug. This camera is currently running on the firmware version 3.00 and I have not yet been able to find out through which combination of settings this bug occurs. But you may come across this start and stop problem with SDI signals. It is expressed as follows. Connected devices that support a start-stop function permanently start and stop in standby, such as recording devices or an EVF, which dims down the fan after starting the recording. I was able to fix the problem by resetting the camera. This is of course annoying because you lose all your camera settings, but that's the only way I've been able to find so far. Let's take a look at the connectors of the camera and why there is a small downer. The camera has both, an HDMI and an SDI output. Both can output a maximum of 4K with 60 FPS. RAW is possible via SDI in conjunction with the Ninja V Plus with up to 120 FPS. More on that later. Timecode is output by default via SDI. For HDMI, this must first be activated in the menu. Under TC slash media, go to HDMI TC out and set it to on. To output a start stop signal to external devices, go to the project menu. Scroll to SDI HDMI Rec Control and set the setting to SDI HDMI Remote IF. Remember, not all devices support a start stop signal via all inputs. The EVF, for example, only supports start stop via SDI. The frame rate of the outputs is fundamentally linked to the camera's internal recording. The resolution is set either in the menu under Monitoring or in the quick menu on page 5. This is independent of the recording resolution. Unfortunately, Sony only offers us three combinations of resolutions here. I can't say why this is the case. There may be technical reasons for this, but it brings with it a problem. We can output either 4K on both outputs, HD on both outputs, or 4K via SDI and HD via HDMI. The option to output 4K via HDMI and HD via SDI does not exist. This can become relevant if you want to make an external 4K recording via HDMI and at the same time connect a wireless transmitter or an EVF that can only process HD signals via SDI. This combination does not work. You can imagine that this problem was particularly relevant to me when I had not yet solved the start-stop bug. Because until then, I was forced to connect high quality external recordings via HDMI. Fortunately, the Ninja V has an internal function to convert the 4K and even 4.2K RAW signals down to HD and output it again via HDMI. I can't say often enough how great and helpful this function is. I wish Blackmagic could offer something similar. Let's get to recording in RAW. As you probably know, the camera supports RAW output in ProRes RAW, both via HDMI or via SDI. To activate one or the other, go to the quick menu on page 4 and select the appropriate codec option. Once an output is switched to RAW, the signal on the other is limited to HD, so you cannot record with the Ninja via HDMI and RAW and at the same time perform a high quality 4K ProRes recording via SDI. When switching the camera to RAW, you must also select which output the signal should be sent to and also whether you want to take an in-camera recording at the same time. These are the respective RAW and XAVCI options. If you have not selected one of these options, the recording button lights up, but it's not recorded internally. An important fact you should know, if you want to record RAW with up to 120 FPS, you need the Ninja V Plus and the SDI model, plus possibly the RAW via SDI license for about 100 bucks. 
By the way, at those higher frame rates in RAW, you are limited to normal and slightly cropped 4K, but that doesn't surprise me with that much data. If you're not really satisfied with ProRes RAW as a codec, for example because you work in DaVinci Resolve, RAW Converter would be a way to make this material usable. Unfortunately, this only works on M1, M2 Mac and costs 90 bucks per camera license. If you convert the clips, you'll get a DNG image sequence that can be used in Resolve. In my experience, you should use lossless compression for best quality, because with high compression variants, the image quality suffers massively. You'll see big digital looking pixel blocks. So it's not like Blackmagic cameras, where you can confidently record in high compressions without having to worry about big, if any, optical losses. Unfortunately, you need a separate license for each type of camera. This means, for example, if you have an FX6 as an A camera and an FX3 as a B camera, you need a license for both cameras. If you have several FX6 cameras, they all work with one license. However, once you have giant converted files in DaVinci Resolve, they offer a great quality that is worth the effort for me personally with important projects. Here are a few examples of file sizes of a 30 second clip in 4K in different recording formats. As you can see, recordings in ProRes RAW are amazingly small and comparable to ProRes HQ recordings. But after converting to what I think is the best compression, they become three times larger. But let's get back to the camera. If you want to display either a LUT on an output or the user interface, you can set it in the quick menu on page 5. The output of all overlays can be activated or deactivated separately for HDMI and SDI. The output LUT, however, only on both together. It would have been nice to get an HD output with LUT for the director or the client and a 4K output without LUT for an external recording. This only works with raw output since any setting for overlays and LUT are not taken into account there. If you record in DCI 4K, the camera offers only two setting options, both outputs with DCI or DCI via SDI and HD via HDMI. Here the display informations can only be activated or deactivated on the HDMI output. Overall, you can see that the results and combinations of these settings are a bit mixed, but when you're not struggling with the SDI bug, there are enough setting options to be prepared for most everyday situations. If you'd like to know more why external recordings are the best quality option, I have two videos online on that subject because recording internally unfortunately has some quality problems. And if you're interested in how you can control the camera with live view on an iPad, I also have a video on that subject.